on this week's Titans All Access. Left guard breaks the tackle to the five. Henry to the end zone. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the King. Touchdown, Titans. Derrick Henry reaches a career milestone that would have seemed impossible just five seasons ago. Plus, get after it today. Let's go. <laughs> Not one, but two Titans mic'd up as the Titans remain undefeated at home. Titans All Access starts now. But there he is, the Yuli Bulldozer, Derrick Henry. Got Chris Moore. Can he catch it? No, what a catch! Oh. Will Levis! Levis to Hopkins! Oh. Big Jeff! Fires up the intercept of Adi Hooker. There's Hopkins making the catch. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio for another edition of Titans All Access. I'm Mike Keith. Five years ago this weekend, on December 2nd, 2018, the Titans beat the Jets 26 to 22. Derrick Henry did not start at running back that day, and he had 10 carries for 40 yards and a touchdown. Henry's performance was right in line with his 2018 season to that point, less than he or anyone else had hoped. But four days later, in a Thursday night game with Jacksonville, the King exploded for 238 yards and four touchdowns. Since that December night, Derrick Henry has been on a five-year run that ranks as one of the best in the history of the NFL. Over 70 games, he has averaged more than 100 yards rushing per contest, has averaged nearly five yards per carry, and has scored 69 touchdowns on the ground. Astounding. Last weekend, he crossed the historic 9,000-yard barrier. For how it was going for Derrick Henry in 2018, no one could have seen this coming. What we didn't know is that Henry was putting in serious work while he was going through his tough time. And at one point in late October, he looked for advice from one of the only people who had been in his shoes. For Titans at 25, presented by Bud Light, this is The Conversation. A conversation. An exchange of sentiments, observations, opinions, or ideas. It's not part of the definition, but sometimes a conversation involves advice. Advice that can be career changing. Advice that can be franchise changing. Derek Henry and Eddie George had a conversation like that in 2018. And the results changed the course, the arc of both Henry and the Tennessee Titans. You know the story. The leading rusher in high school history in Uly, Florida. The Heisman Trophy winner for the national champions at Alabama. The heir apparent to DeMarco Murray with the Tennessee Titans. 2018 was Derrick Henry's time to take the throne. And then it all went wrong. I wondered at that time how much longer Derrick Henry was actually going to be a part of this roster. That was a real question in my head. I wasn't sure, honestly, at that moment who would trade for him and what the Titans would be able to get. But I thought he was on his way out of the rotation and maybe on the way out of Tennessee. The story could have ended here. It usually does. The person who has been a star their entire life cannot handle failure, and they give up. But Derrick Henry wasn't the normal star. His football pedigree might have said royalty, but his football heart beat like every other person who loved the game with a passion, much like Eddie George. So when things looked their most bleak, Derrick Henry turned to the only man who would understand. He began a conversation with Eddie George, and Eddie told him the truth. I was very blunt and honest with him. And, and you know, it was one particular play that they, when they played the Chargers in London, when he was matched up in the hole against a, low, a smaller um, linebacker, and he elected not to challenge him, but to try to outrun him and hit the home run, and he was an easy tackle. And I just challenged him to front the defender up. Your, your best asset is your size. You know, impose your will, and everything else will come. And it was just the stuff that I, I needed to hear. And um, it was right after one of the games, we, we actually played in London against the Chargers, and he was there. And, um, you know, the season wasn't going the way I, I wanted it to, and I was like, let me call Eddie, you know, because 
You know, he was a, a premier back in this league paper organization. Just wanted to get his foot on what really he thought. And he shot me straight and um, definitely helped bring him forward. You have to respect Eddie George in that conversation, right? I think even Derek will, will listen to Eddie um, because Eddie walked the walk. And I think Eddie's honesty is what makes him Eddie. He comes from a place of love. He comes from a place to try to help the man. Um, and so I think it's easy to receive feedback from Eddie. That was huge because he said he swallowed his pride, set it to the side and trying to figure out how he steps forward. It's great. And for Eddie to have that honest conversation, the impact that he has is because of that conversation. Now he had to go out and do the work without question. It didn't happen immediately. Derrick Henry ran with the Titans scout team just to get extra reps. The work paid off when his hometown team, the Jacksonville Jaguars, hit Nashville for Thursday night football in early December. Gives it to Henry. Henry bounces it outside. 5, 10, 15, stiff arm, 20, 25, 30, 40, stiff arm, 50, 40, 30. He's on his feet. Big chase, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Titans, 99 yards! While the numbers have piled up, he hasn't let it go to his head. Like Eddie George, Derrick Henry has embraced his role as team leader, community leader, and face of the franchise. He is the pride of Tennessee Titans fans and has accepted that every move he makes will be scrutinized, evaluated. Instead of becoming a shrinking violet, Derrick Henry has blossomed to become a star to a level that no Titan has ever reached. Well, except for maybe Eddie George. Derrick Henry's 29 years old. He's running hills. He's doing ridiculous stuff in the weight room. He's practicing every day and it's because he demands excellence of himself and excellence of his teammates leads that way every day. It's often forgotten that there was a moment in time when Derrick Henry was on the verge of failure. That fact makes his incredible five-year run more impressive. And it all started with a conversation and the humility to be willing to ask for help. Welcome back to the BetMGM studio as this week's edition of Titans All Access continues. NFL Films gets to mic up a team's head coach and select players throughout any given season in addition to what our internal staff captures each game. So it's a particular treat when two players are wired for sound simultaneously as they were on Sunday. And now I invite you to listen up with Duncan as NFL Films had their focus on rookie quarterback Will Levis while we were following veteran wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins. On an overcast day, Thanksgiving weekend in downtown Nashville, Tennessee, welcome to NFL football. All of these types of games when you're in them, they're big, big games just because you need to get the reward of what all the hard work is in this league, and that's winning ball games. The Titans have won every ball game so far at Nissan. We need to continue that today for a lot of reasons. Let's go! Get after it today, let's go. Here we go. Okay, I got you. Okay, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fastest I've ever ran. Lead him. Lead him. Let's Come go. On, baby. Let's... Offense! Get this thing going. Hey, let's go! First play first now. Go, <sighs> boy. Try to double team it, didn't he? They doubled him essentially, too. He went live. They had two people on me. <laughs> Go run, boy. Go run. Hey! Hey! Wait, they go toss left. Henry cuts it up. First down, Tennessee! Keep coming that way. No. I'm gonna push him down. Keep no. coming. <laughs> good kicks. That don't good kicks. Play fake. In trouble. Firing deep downfield for a cock. Well, he's got it at the eight. A cock to the five. A cock dive. die. Hey, good pass, boy. That's a touchdown. They know it's coming. Who cares? Let's go. Let's go. Levis gives Henry. Henry pounding. Second effort. Third effort. Fourth effort. Ah. Touchdown. Hey, good drive. Tight. Ready, buddy. Ready. Out of boy, Derek. Boy. 
Good job, Corey. It's a good drive. Mic'd up? Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Appreciate the, appreciate the heads up. Yeah, my bad, guys. I'm mic'd up. I'll bring double donuts next week. Avril Lavigne, my favorite uh, pop star, though. For me to be washed up, they show down. Be I'm trying to go on with two or three people, huh? He's in trouble. He doesn't know it. He's okay. here. He loses the ball. It's oh. picked up by Simmons. He's tackled Let's at the go. 14. Let's go. Let's go, buddy. Yeah! Let's go! Hey, I got you. Here's Henry. Ooh. Left guard. Breaks the tackle to five. Henry to the outside. That is the key! Yeah! Tight! Good stiff arm. That was a sick stiff arm. I told you. Said, come that way. Yeah! Come on! Play. Play, Raj! Trust him. Panthers Trust him. don't rush. The throw completed. Knights hit go. Westbrook and Kide to the 35. Yeah. They're rushing to get on the ball. Let's go, baby! Come on! Y'all yeah, better call that time, man. Holt's kick is on the way! Stay in, stay in this for me, boy. Go! I still, I did bomb it, but I had it in. Young takes the snap. Feels yeah. it. Sack! Did he go on three? He's hit. He's dropped. A body hooker got him. Final score: Tennessee 17, Carolina 10. Win is a win. Good. Good game, dude. Happy for you, dude. What's up, I'm proud of you, bro. Proud of you, bro. Yeah, I appreciate you, too, dude. Have you had enough of DeAndre Hopkins on Titans All Access? I didn't think so. After the break, the second part of my interview with number 10. Stick around for more Titans All Access next. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access. Last week, we visited with Titans wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins about his career in football. This week, we give you part two of this interview, where DeAndre talks about things other than football. Here's DeAndre Hopkins in this week's Nissan Insider. My cause, Mike Cleats, is coming up, and you will be representing uh, the nonprofit, Smooth, that you founded with your mother. Uh, it's done some very special things, empowering women uh, against or who have been affected by domestic violence. Safe to say this is a personal issue for DeAndre Hopkins? Absolutely. Um, a lot of you guys know my mom was involved in the incident many years ago um, and, you know, just found ways to, to turn that, that negative into a positive. And this was one of them, starting a smooth foundation to help other women who um, could have been or was in a situation like that, you know, to try to prevent it. And so, uh, you know, it's something that definitely hits home for us. All right, so let me ask you about uh, going back to college to finish your degree. Have you been surprised at how many people are fascinated by DeAndre Hopkins going back to finish his degree at Clemson? I am uh, surprisingly shocked. Um, you know, I didn't think it would be a big deal. Uh, I didn't know that going back trying to, you know, graduate or get a degree was a big deal. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just doing something that I promised my mom and my father that I would do. It was just that simple, really. It, I mean, there are other things you want to do in your life, and finishing a degree, I'm sure, is something important to you, but it's still a big deal. It is. It is. And uh, that's a big deal because, you know, in my community, not a lot of people make it to college and, and you know, better yet, graduate. So uh, for me, I wanted to, you know, kind of be the person to set an example for, for the youth in my community. Uh, the graduate is important, not just playing sports. Okay, so it's in parks, recreation, and tourism management. management. Correct. Okay, how many hours do you lack? <laughs> Uh, man, I'm lacking a couple. I probably got two semesters left. That's oh, not too bad. It's not, yeah, nothing crazy. What do you want to do with that degree? Uh, well, I, you know, I've always been to, into country music. I want to I wanna throw and have my own uh, festivals and concerts. So that's my plan after football, uh, well, one of them, to get into uh, the festivals of country music, uh, you know, alternative music, uh, that, no that world. Yeah, man. What, what sort of got you interested in the concert festival promotion aspect of it? I went to a concert in South Carolina, where I'm from. It was a small uh, festival, and it was actually like one of the biggest festivals where I'm from, not the you know, highest promoted. But uh, you know, it was something for my small town for us to get a joy out of. And uh, 
you know, it meant a lot to us locals having that little festival there. And uh, just seeing everybody come out, you know, all the people who make IPAs and just, you know, all the locals who do all the little knickknacks in their backyard, you know, come together. And I always thought that was cool as a kid, you know, how something like that can bring, bring a community together. Well, it's so impressive because it's clear you love the game and you take the game seriously and you put everything you have into the game. But there are other parts of your life too. The game is not your entire life. Fair? That's very fair to say. Um, I'm, you know, I, I like art, I like ceramics, um, you know, love music. You know, so, uh, you know, man, it's a, lot, it's a lot to me other than the game, but uh, football is definitely my passion. To enjoy all of our interview with DeAndre Hopkins, we invite you to subscribe to the OTP, which is short for Official Titans Podcast. You get a new OTP episode every Monday and Thursday night during the season. Subscribe today to the OTP wherever you get your podcasts, including TennesseeTitans.com slash podcasts. Welcome back to Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio. Coach Dave McGinnis is here from Titans Radio. Good to see you. Thanks, Mike Keith. Good to be here as always. Second go around with the Colts upcoming. The defensive front for the Indianapolis Colts, really the front seven is just outstanding. What makes them so tough? Their linebackers behind the ball are really, really good players. We, we highlighted Zaire Franklin last time we talked about him. He's got a partner now in EJ Speed that is really starting to step up as a fifth round pick, is really coming into his own in this league. And then DeForest Buckner. Everything begins and ends with DeForest Buckner. Yeah, DeForest Buckner's only 6'7", 310 pounds, that's all. He has five sacks. And you look at Franklin, he has 124 tackles. That's the third leading total in the league. But I want to touch on EJ Speed a little further. So let's go beneath the surface, powered by Microsoft, and take a look if you don't mind, Coach. No, you're first. I'm first? Okay. That is EJ Speed. They're in a four-man front here. This is a 4-3 front, but they're not walked up into the line of scrimmage, Mike. I want you to watch him on the back side, hat in hands. Bang. He is playing to the side of the three technique. This is a three technique. This is a shade. Here's our guy, EJ Speed, right here. This blocking unit right here has outnumbered the defenders over here. So somebody on this side, if action goes away, is going to have to be able to defeat a down block from a guy that's unencumbered, hat in hands, and get in the backfield. Excellent key and diagnosed player. Playing next to Zaire Franklin gives them two guys behind the ball that are excellent, excellent players. This next thing we're going to look at here, this is 11 personnel right here on this side. And what we've got here, this is three wideouts. Over here, you've got a cut split. So they've lined up in a four-band front, but you can see they've got some lurkers. C.J. Stroud is trying to read which one of these guys might come, which one of them might not, and then they'll want to redirect it to where the extra pressure is coming from. They do a nice enough job of bogeying or disguising this look that you're going to see what happens with E.J. Speed. All right, let it go, Mike. There's E.J. Speed right there. 45 on your screen. There you see him coming. They redirect it the wrong way on top of the quarterback, done. So this guy is a guy they took a chance on in the draft and he's done nothing but develop along Zaire Franklin to make this defense really, really stout against the run and the pass. So we see there challenges for a rookie quarterback for Houston, C.J. Stroud, challenges this weekend for the Titans rookie quarterback, Will Levis. Absolutely, trying to identify where he's gonna be, where they're gonna come from, and then also you're gonna have to get hats on he, Franklin, and Buckner to get a run game started. That's a must in this game. Good stuff, Coach Mack. Thank you, Mike Keith. Dave McGinnis taking us beneath the surface, powered by Microsoft. More from the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access when we return. It's time for the decision of the week, sponsored by Hughes and Coleman. Mike Vrabel made a critical decision with 6.25 left in the first quarter of Sunday's win over Carolina. With no score in the game and fourth and one at its own 30-yard line, Mike Vrabel didn't hesitate. And he chose to go for it. That fourth down conversion kept the drive alive and culminated in the Titans' first touchdown of a 17-10 victory over the Panthers. That's the decision of the week, sponsored by Hughes and Coleman. It's time for my Seat Geek keys to the game. Titans play Indianapolis this Sunday. Nissan Stadium kickoff set for 12.02 Central Time. Key number one is be ready for anything. The Colts are 6-5 with a new head coach, Shane Steichen. 
And so far, he has been willing to go on fourth downs. He has trick plays. He's not afraid to line up people anywhere and everywhere to try to make something happen. The Titans must be ready for anything from Shane Steichen and the Colts on Sunday. Key number two, gather Moss. That's Zach Moss. In the first game on October 8th, Moss rushed for 165 yards, caught two passes for 30 yards, so he totaled nearly 200 yards in total offense. Titans cannot let that happen again. And key number three, be firm up front. I'm talking about the offensive line. Indianapolis has six quality pass rushers that they will rotate in the defensive front. The Titans can't just focus on one guy or focus on two guys. They've got to block every guy who's in the game because they are capable of getting to Will Levis and be a disruption. The Titans' offensive line and tight ends and backs must be firm up front to protect Will Levis. Titans season ticket members, a special reminder for you. If you renew your season tickets for 2024 by December the 18th, you'll lock in your price not only for 2024, but also for 2025 and 2026. That's right. Renew by December 18th, and you lock in your price of your season tickets until the Titans move into the new Nissan Stadium. For more information, call 615-565-4200. 615-565-4200. Forty two hundred and lock them in season ticket holders. We'll see you Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Titans and the Colts will be on Titans radio at 11 a.m. Central time with the award winning Titans countdown. Thanks for watching Titans All Access and we'll see you next time.